Kim, Kim Cameron, uh, great pleasure to have you here. I'm really pleased you could make it. Um, and have you, have you enjoyed uh, the event? Have you found it useful yourself? Oh, well, thanks for inviting me. It was a great event. Uh, it is a great event that's going on. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I found it very useful. Your, your uh, keynote uh, yesterday, um, Identity Comes of Age, uh, how, how, do you, how have you seen that emerging then, and why did you start with that sort of subject? Well, I think we're at a really interesting juncture in terms of the way the internet is evolving. And when you take things, it's a collision of forces between, say, social networking, um, cloud computing, uh, the recession and the need to outsource, uh, and just the general criminalization and, and opportunity for criminals to wreak havoc. Mm -hmm. You put all of those mm -hmm. things together with the fact that we've made a whole bunch of progress as an industry, you know, as, as, as competitors working as collaborators to, to, to change identity and, and, and make it safer. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting juncture. Mm. I wanted to convey that. I wanted to convey the fact that we were actually uh, on the verge, I believe, of, of a big transformation as things become commodity and built into the platform and just always available versus being high-end Mercedes-type technology. Mm. You, you, um, you talked about privacy, and that's a big issue for everyone, especially, as you say, with some of the Facebooks and that that are around. Um, and you mentioned claims-based identity. I mean, what, what do you, how do you think that will, will help? Well, yes, privacy is the, the, the most important single aspect of identity, in my view. Um, and we have to get that right. And there's a great problem with all of the digital connectivity that's happening, uh, uh, you know, a, tr a tremendous possibility that it will erode our privacy completely and create a very alienating experience. Um, so I think it's incumbent on us to make sure that we structure this so that privacy is enhanced, not reduced. And I think we can do that through the new technologies that, that are being developed. Um, so one of those is claims. <clears throat> and I guess the, the easiest way to describe claims is um, it, moving away from a reliance on the fact that you have an identifying number or an identification uh, that is uh, something very numerical and, and, and unique towards a world where you are able to present statements about yourself. And, and that statement could be enough to get you into the site that you want to visit or, or get you the service you want. So, so for example, uh, as Roger Dean, if, if I, you know, I know you're happily married, Roger, but uh, you know, if, if, if you were interested in a dating site, you, you, might, uh, you might want to be able to prove that you're, say, over 21 and uh, that you're actually male or uh, whatever, mm -hmm. and be able to make those assertions without necessarily giving away the fact that you are Roger Dean. You're, right. yeah, and, so, so I'm just taking that as an extreme example where you only want to release enough. You want the information to be provable and true, but just release enough to accomplish whatever goals you have. And so if we take that kind of approach instead of sort of the approach of releasing everything about everyone all the time, um, I believe that, that, that we can really do a lot to enhance the, the privacy on the web. Mm. So, for example, if you were going into hospital, the admissions department would want to know your address, but not what the problem was, and the, the doctor or the surgeon would need to know what the problem was, but not necessarily where you, where you live. Excellent, that, that yeah. sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. 
Um, you've, you've produced a paper with Reinhard Posch, um, CTO of Austria. Mm -hmm. And what were you, what are you, what's, what's in it and what were you hoping to achieve with that? Well, it, it, we, uh, we were, I guess when we started, we didn't know exactly what we were going to achieve, but what we ended up doing was what we called a proposal for a common identity framework. Hmm. Um, and I think one of the problems is we don't really have any way, any common ways of talking about this. And we don't have very good ways of explaining the, the new options that are available, explaining them to, say, political people or policy makers or even inside the enterprise. Mm. So our thinking was it would be, it would be great if we could have a, a model defined and some vocabulary defined so we could start talking in common about how this stuff works. And, and, and that way we could get, say, lawyers and politicians and others to look at the model and go, which option do I want? What future, which future do I want that is amongst those possi possibilities? Uh, so yes, it was extremely interesting working with Reinhard and with uh, Kai Rannenberg, who is a professor from uh, Germany, um, and myself, and, and then bringing our different concerns from government, industry, uh, a academia, mm. into alignment uh, in, a, in, a, in a paper. So it would be great if people look at the paper and uh, feedback. Uh, we're very interested in that. And where can people find the document? Oh, on my website. Uh, my website is identityblog.com. And I always appreciate a chance to flog my blog. So. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Kim, as always, a great pleasure to see you. Thank you very Good much to see for you, uh, Roger. being here. Thank you. Thanks.